to our panelists. If everybody on the panel could go ahead and uh, come to the stage in this order, please. I need Tiffany, Tashawn, Heather, Jennifer, Crystal, Reggie, Jessica, Burmery, Brooke, and Paige. And sip those last sips of alcohol because we might need it for this. Um, I was supposed to have a little clicker. A little clicker? I don't have a clicker. Oh no, I thought you asked me if we were ready. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to click, talk, and hold this at the same time. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, Russell, are we good to go with the slides? Okay. While we're getting the slides together, I want to uh, introduce myself to you. I'm Jody Washington. They have appointed me the Education Chair of WVA for 2024. I'm so incredibly excited to be here. Some of you may recognize me from the luncheon that I spoke at. I'm not sure when that was, October something, November. Okay, and it was a damn good time. Don't know if anybody remembers that. Um, when Heather asked me to do it, I was overjoyed, and um, I honestly can't think of anybody better to do this than me, just so you guys know, because toot, <laughs> toot, toot, toot my own horn here. Uh, the reason why we're here today, the panel um, is called How Can I Help You? And basically it's because uh, I've been thinking about this for a very long time. The wedding industry just kind of is... One, where we all think about um, ourselves and what we do, but we don't really think about how we can help other vendors become great as well on wedding day. And so for me, um, you know, weddings are a production, and um, it's, it takes a village. It takes a village to create a great day, and if you have one vendor that doesn't, hit the mark, it's like a domino flips, right? And the whole thing falls. So I put this panel together today with the people that are here. Um, I chose everybody on this panel because I felt like they were qualified to talk about what it takes to run a successful event and what we wish other vendors knew about our businesses. So without further ado, I'm going to read the bios of everybody on the panel so you can get an idea of who they are and then we're going to go right into the questions. And I'm literally holding, clicking, just give me a minute here. I've got to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Hold on. I can, no joy. And I'm going to sit. I am, you know, because I, I need to sit, okay? I'll stand up in a minute. Okay, this isn't it. 
Okay, here we go. Sorry, I usually have a podium. This is really, I'll never do it without one again. Y'all hear that? Please, I should have called Josh to bring me one from church. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first we have Tiffany Scott. Uh, Tiffany assumes the role, yeah, can we get a, can we get a round of applause? And I'd like for you to do that for all our panelists because they really took time out of their day to come here and educate everybody. So, you know, round of applause after each introduction. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Tiffany Scott assumes the role and the owner of um, and the lead planner at Luxury Design DFW where she has demonstrated a consistent commitment in delivering outstanding coordination and planning services throughout the DFW area since the inception of her company seven years ago. <clears throat> With a notable track record, Luxury Design DFW has earned trust of over 200 couples who have chosen the company to transform their wedding day into reality. In addition to her responsibilities at Luxury Design DFW, Tiffany holds the esteemed position of first vice president on the board of directors for the Society of Wedding Professionals. Let's give that, you know, that's a, that's a big thing, right? Her active engagement in the industry further um, is evidenced by her six-year membership with the Wedding uh, VA Associate. That's us. You know, she's been here for six years. So six years for Tiffany Scott. Come on, come on. <laughs> um, beyond her professional pursuits, Tiffany fulfills roles as a dedicated wife and mother while um, concurrently managing her business endeavors. Notably, Tiffany ex um, extends her expertise generally mentoring and joining coordinators and planners within our industry and embodying commitment to the development and growth and emergency professionals in the field. You guys, I do not have my glasses on and I'm a really, really great reader and I'm gonna have to pass this on to somebody, for somebody else to read these. I really apologize, but I cannot see this shit. So just a second. <laughs> Hi guys, so quick change of plans. Um, so I'm Abigail, for those of you that obviously don't know me, so I'm gonna be helping Jody read everybody's bio that is on the panel. So next we have Tashorn Jackson. Tashorn is genuinely gifted and a talented photographer, skillful DJ, and a culinary enthusiast with remarkable abilities. Tashorn has been fortunate to travel globally, capturing the precious moments of weddings and special events. His journey has taken him across East Africa, parts of Europe, and the Caribbean, North and South America. In 2011, he transitioned from his architecture career to pursue entrepreneurship. Despite being naturally reserved, he has had the privilege of speaking on significant stages in America and as far as Cuba. Tishorn truly comes to life in the presence of others, finding joy in offering value to those he encounters. Tishorn aspires to make a meaningful impact on the wedding and event industry with the genuine hope that others can benefit. His larger goal is to contribute towards breaking down barriers related to racial discrimination and gatekeeping within the wedding industry. He humbly believes that as a collective, we can thrive by embracing and understanding our cultural differences, fostering an environment where we are unafraid to acknowledge and overcome our own biases. Finally, Tashorn is a Caribbean man through and through and hails from the island of Antigua and Barbuda. Next, we have Ms. Heather Nicole. He oh, I'm so sorry, Heather Nickel, I apologize. A wife and proud mother of three, wears many hats as co-owner of several successful ventures, including HD Liquid Catering, Cantina Caravan, Mix Bartending, and HD Hospitality. Heather loves being involved in the wedding networking industry by serving as an active member of SWP, PWG, and first chair of Wedding Vendors Association North Dallas for the past seven years. Heather's journey in the service industry began in high school, and she continued to climb the ladder while working her way through college. Her managerial roles in various restaurants and bars across the Dallas area helped expand her skills, and she found a deep passion for hospitality. Her pivotal moment came during her time as a talent and booking manager for the city of Allen, 
where she developed the confidence and expertise that ultimately led her, venture, her to venture into the event industry to start h and Liquid Catering in 2012. Then in 2016, Heather merged her talents with Don Branzuela to co-found HD Liquid Catering, marking the beginning of a successful partnership dedicated to delivering exceptional event experiences. Everybody a, hand of, a round of applause for Heather, please. Next, we have Ms. Jennifer Serra. Uh, Jennifer Serra has been in the, in the beauty industry for 18 years. Her background includes sales and education roles for top cosmetic brands such as Stilla, Tarte, and Too Faced Cosmetics. Her work has been featured for New York Fashion Week concepts and top fashion designers and so much more. Jennifer has consistently been with the top three sellers in the nation with every company she has stepped foot in. She eventually was in charge of managing sales events for the Texas region with the concentration of strengthening doors in the, in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. She has a true passion for identifying and developing opportunities in order to heighten a sense of brand awareness. Her belief is that one must maintain a high level of service in order to create lasting business relationships. All of this experience has given her a leg up stepping out on her own and quickly forming an on-location hair and makeup team within six months solo. Round of applause, please, for Jennifer. <laughs> Next, we have Ms. Crystal Granger. Crystal Granger is the proud owner of Funky Town Social Co., a wedding and event planning company that also specializes in floral design. Her journey in the event planning industry began during her college years, where she planned elaborate events ranging from conferences to community festivals. In 2017, she decided to start her own business under the name Funky Town Affairs. Since then, her business has flourished and she has grown her team from a single planner to a team of 15 employees. The team at Funky Town Social Co. is committed to providing their clients with exceptional planning services and creating beautiful floral arrangements that leave a lasting impression. As her company continued to expand, Crystal made the decision to rebrand as Funky Town Social Co. to encompass all of the elements of her ever-growing brand. Her team has received rave reviews from clients, venues, and industry professionals, and their mission is to celebrate and serve. Everybody hand a round of applause, please. <laughs> Next, we have Ms. Jessica Dixon. Jessica Dixon is the co-owner of Whispering Oaks. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go back to Reggie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Reggie, I went in order. <laughs> okay, so we have Mr. Reggie Washington. <laughs> Born, and <ra> <laughs> Born and raised in Houston, Texas, Reggie Washington is a seasoned cinematographer with over 13 years of expertise in the world of visual storytelling. Although he is a proud TCU Horned Frog, Reggie initially pursued his passion for filmmaking at the LA Film School, transitioning from a hobbyist to a dedicated professional. Teaming up with his wife, Jody, Reggie now manages three thriving photo video brands, demonstrating not only his technical prowess, but also his knack for business. Their collaboration extends to Real Motion Pros, a corporate content company Reggie founded, specializing in branding, headshots, and promotional content for wedding vendors. With over 600 weddings under his belt, his lens has captured love stories in diverse corners of the world, including Ethiopia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Turks, Mexico, and beyond. Beyond the professionalism real realm, Reggie is a devoted husband and father. His 11-year-old son, Grayson, shows early signs of inheriting their family business, eager to learn the ropes of the wedding game. Chip off the old block. Everybody give it up for Reggie, please. Okay, now we have Miss Jessica Dixon. <laughs> Jessica Dixon is the co-owner of Whispering Oaks Wedding Venue since 2016, is a recognized entrepreneur featured in Gainesville, Gainesville Living, Dallas Voyage, Dallas Shoutout, as well as the North Texas Bridal Magazines. She is also a proud owner of Absolute Window Solutions, specializing in window treatment design created in 2008. Jessica is actively involved in the Valley View Chamber, Wedding Vendors Association, Ditton Event Professionals, SWP, and the Boss Babes. Jessica is dedicated to promoting and supporting family-owned and operated businesses. Jessica channels her passions into ensuring that every couple's wedding is their dream come true. 
Her commitment shines through in creating memorable experiences, blending attention to detail with a personal touch, making each celebration uniquely special. Her dedication reflects in the joy of the couples as they embark on their journey together. Jessica calls Valley View, Texas home, where she lives with her husband and a charming herd of cows, balancing her role as mother to six raised children and three grandchildren. Jessica finds joy in the heart of family life amidst the, surround, the serene surroundings of Valley View, Texas. Everybody, let's give it a hand for Jessica. <laughs> next, we have Miss Brooke Taylor. Uh, right, no, who's next? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going in order, I promise. Yes. Okay, guys, sorry. We have Bramari Winston. Uh, Miss Bramari Winston is a creative force be behind beloved Texas bakery, Blush and Whisk, establishing the brand four years ago in Arlington and zealously leading it to sweet success over time. Bramari channeled her lifelong baking passion into reality in 2020, manifesting the charm pink hued Blush and Whisk storefront from dream to fruition through relentless hard work. She devoted herself fully to nurturing her new shop, determined to bring joy through nostalgic childhood tastes, reinvented with her special eye for trend forward designs. Today, Bramari captures, I'm sorry, today Bramari captains a team of elite bakers at the flagship location in Arlington. Staying hands on while strategically growing, Bramari has established Blush and Whisk as a brand synonymous with indulgent style and modern sweetness. Together, the team aims to spread love and positivity through every treat that leaves their doors. Everybody, a round of applause for Bramari. <laughs> Next, we have Miss Brooke Taylor. Brooke is a, a dedicated professional and part of the CN Catering family since 2018. Starting as a venue sales representative, Brooke quickly ascended the ranks, showcasing exceptional skills and commitment, and now holds the position of showroom and rental sales manager. With my love for the company and a genuine belief in its values, I embody everything that CN Catering stands for. The journey began in the service industry where I earned invaluable experience working in restaurants and bartending during the early years. This foundation in hospitality has seamlessly transitioned into a career with CN Catering, allowing me to bring firsthand experience and a deep understanding of the service industry to the table. I have unwavering passion for the profession. Now in the role of showman, I'm sorry, showroom and rental sales manager, I am at, store, at my forefront of the company's operations, ensuring excellence in every interaction. I have an ability to infuse honesty and reality into every meeting. In an industry often filled with Pinterest perfect ideas and casual mentions of acquaintances being event planners, I bring a grounded perspective, ensuring that every event is not only impeccably executed, but also aligns with the practical realities of the industry. Everybody, let's give it up for Miss Brooke Taylor. <laughs> Next, we have Miss Paige Mejia. <laughs> Miss Paige Mejia is FPO, FEO, and has been featured on KERA's Art and Seek, NBC, CBS, The CW, The Meeting Professional Magazine, and The Wall Street Journal. Everybody, let's give it up. <laughs> A 15-year veteran in the events industry, Paige Mejia is co-owner and serves as, as chief marketing officer for Pyrotech, the oldest Texas-based professional pyrotechnic display company. This firework and love and gal is passionate about the value of networking and growing your event business. Past board member of CCEP, TX, ACOM, ILEA Dallas, DFW, NACE, past president of the DFW Chapter of Meeting Professionals International, and current president of the Texas Live Events Coalition, director of community engagement for WIPA Dallas, and Southwest Regional Vice Chair for MPI Global. Paige resides in McKinney with her high school sweetheart, two teens, and a menagerie of animals. Let's give it up for Ms. Paige. one of these at home. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, as you guys can see, we have an amazing panel full of um, industry professionals. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the questions. Because I'm blind as a bat, I'm actually going to have Abby read the questions from the list that I have, and then the wild card question comes from me, because nobody knows what the hell that is. So with, why are we popping, Kyle? What's going on? Is it me? Am I doing it? Oh, Tiffany. I was like, hey, we need to... 
What are you going to do? Okay, so I'm going to have um, Abby read the questions to the panel, um, and then I'm going to wildcard them so we can learn a little bit more about what they would do in certain situations, what they wish you knew about their business, and how we can all come together and make um, wedding days great, okay? Um, and again, this typically isn't um, how I would present, but I had a mini stroke last week, and I'm doing my very best to stay upright in these heels, <laughs> and I'm just doing the very best I can to be here, so... Um, and I can't see to save my life, so I, I really apologize. You guys, you got to bear with me, okay? Um, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with Tiffany. Tiffany, with weddings having so many moving parts and vendors, why is it important to have a detailed timeline? Oh, sorry. And how do you feel it adds to the wedding day experience for all involved? Okay, um, so as we all know, I think in the room, a detailed timeline is really the only way to have a successful event, to execute uh, the event flawlessly. Um, and a good timeline comes from that vendor communication ahead of time. So of course, us as a planner, that's our job to be reaching out 30 days in advance, um, touching base with everybody if we haven't already at that point and working together to make sure it's not just our timeline that runs the day, it's cohesive for everybody. Um, no two vendor companies are the same. Um, there are plenty of photo and video teams that take an hour to set up. There's some that walk in 15 minutes before and everybody handles how they do photos at the ceremony different. Hair and makeup doesn't work at the same pace. So it's important to have that communication ahead of time and there is no such thing as um, a cookie cutter timeline that's just going to fit every single event. Um, let's see what else. Um, and then the timeline, so a good detailed timeline. Um, the other important part about it is if something were to happen to the planner or um, anybody that had put that timeline together, if it has that completion to it, anybody in the room should be able to grab that timeline and run it. The DJ should have it in their email. They can take over. Photo video should be able to. Maid of honor, mother of the bride should be able to run everything off that list. Um, there is no such thing as too much information. And again, that all comes from us working together before the event. Um, on the day of, as far as timeline execution, uh, the one thing I will say is the toxic attitude of I'm the most important person here um, can derail the entire vibe in a wedding. Um, nobody, nobody in this room, myself included, planners included, none of us are the most important there. It's, it can't happen without the bride and the groom and the officiant or a judge. Um, the weddings can be done without any of us here. So that mindset um, needs to be left at the door. And once we get in there and that time before, we are um, only helping each other by working together and being a team. So that comes before the wedding and also day of executing that timeline. Your wild card question is, thank you. Your wild card question is, how frustrating for you does it become when you send a timeline to all the vendors involved and ask for a response or ask for their arrival time, ask for their setup time or ask for their input and you don't get it. And when you don't get it, what extra work does that pose for you in having to go back and do extra work, again, you know, a little redundancy, um, in, in making sure that they are on the same page? So yeah, that again circles back to the importance of we need to get these out in a, an appropriate time, 30 days in advance. Um, if you guys are getting timelines that are only a week out, the night before the wedding, the morning of the wedding you're receiving it. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, a whole different story. Um, but yeah, so if at 30 days out, you know, you give it a couple of days and you're not hearing a response, that's our job to stay on you. Um, and we're not trying to be bad people, we just really need the answers, you know, to the questions that we're asking you. Um, absolute worst case scenario, there have been um, every vendor category from caterers to photographers to DJs that just refuse for whatever reason to respond and then that's our job as planners to plan for every worst case scenario. So that means <clears throat> if I haven't had communication with a DJ 
and you haven't answered that email on the day of, as soon as you get in that building, it's, it's go time, and we're going to go over everything right there before you get your setup. Um, same thing with floral. If you haven't heard from floral, it, it's time to go over everything and make sure everybody's on the same page. But yes, it does create a lot of work. Um, and again, it's, it's only beneficial for everybody involved. Um, give us your input. Tell us how long stuff takes. Tell us your arrival time. Tell us how long it's going to take you to set up that cake table. Take a look at the floor plan. If you notice the cake table's in front of a window, like we need time um, to go over all of these things in advance. So there is a reason we're bothering you so far in advance. Um, and we just, I think all of us collectively, we all want what's best for the couple and we all want a seamless event. And like I tell my couples during consultations, um, we want it seamless and stress-free for them, but a detailed timeline means I get to be stress-free. I'm not a planner that runs around with a, like a chicken with my head cut off at weddings. There, there's no question that you should be having to come answer or ask me because it's already on that timeline. Is messing. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, man, thank you, Tiffany. Next question is for Tashawn Jackson. Okay, so what role does diversity and inclusion play in the wedding industry, and how can vendors work together to create a more inclusive and representative, commu representative community? Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate you. That's a tough question to answer. For me, I'm from the Caribbean, my bio says, right from Antigua and Barbuda. In that space, we have different cultures there. Um, we embrace our differences. You know, I'm the black man, there's a white man, there's a Chinese man, there's a Spanish man, there's the, um, the Syrians, they call him the Amiga man, right? We're all different, we all embrace it. But I've noticed in this wedding space, that's not the same thing that we experience. I know in 2020, after George Floyd, DEI became popular across the wedding industry, even the NFL, a friend of mine's on the board at NFL, handling that, that department. But I'm wondering, are people really open to the idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because to me, inclusion is an action word. And I think that that idea that um, it's important becomes like a checkbox to appease people of color and the disenfranchised. Um, it was done to kind of make you know people feel guilty. Oh, let's do this thing now. But I'm looking at the industry now, I'm like, the higher up I go, I don't see it. By a show of hands. If I give you a list right now, every vendor category in the wedding space, DJ, photographer, caterer, could you list a person that doesn't look like you? Can you fill it out? I'm certain 95% of you cannot because you aren't a student of our craft. And the thing is, you don't have to be. You don't need us. You don't. But I think Dallas Fort Worth is very diverse yet your vendor list isn't. It doesn't represent the market. I had a bride last year, she's a black bride, chocolate bride. She reached out to me, she said, hey, my planner referred everybody to me that was white. And I'm like, maybe the planner doesn't even know who exists. There are amazing vendors with different backgrounds in Dallas-Fort Worth that does amazing work around the world. Yet we don't make it a priority, because why, you don't need it, right? You have your circle of friends you go with, you all built, came up together, why bring somebody else new? And I get it. You have a system that works. But it's not always fair to the bride or the groom, whomever. It's not fair to yourself. When you learn about different cultures and backgrounds, we grow as people. I think Dallas has become, and the industry itself at large, very stagnant. That's what my, my mentors, you know, he shoots $50,000 weddings. That's his price, shoot a wedding. I asked him, at these weddings that you're at, how many people look like me that's not the valet, the bartender, or somebody in the band. And it was as if I gave him some skates. He was kind of skating around the question, right? It's a hard question, because he didn't realize it. He said, well, I never thought of it. Why is that? I'm a black skilled wedding photographer. I'm really good at my job. You know, I realized that I can only go so far unless a white 
plan opens the door for me. I'm limited to what I can do financially. But I see that what I see happening, and it, please don't feel guilty at all. I'm just speaking the truth, right? Oftentimes, we'll take the black dollar from the bride or the groom and refer out people that look like us. I don't think that's the right thing to do. My friend Gupreet here, great photographer. I brought him to a wedding with me, I think, two years ago. And the bride's mom said, that's his skilled photographer. Of course. I have friends from all backgrounds. When I bring people to shoot with me, they usually look different because we grow as we learn about each other. I help him at shoot weddings. I learn about his culture. I'm like, oh, take, oh, take the shoes off here. You mean? <laughs> I got chastised with some shoes in the temple. Okay? But it's important that we grow as people by mixing things up. Invite somebody who don't, you don't know, get to know them. Be honest and genuine. Don't do things out of guilt. I'm not trying to convince you, you know what I'm saying? But it's important that we really reach out to other people. We could never grow as people. If you say, you know what, my business is good, I don't need to grow. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. The key is to, if you want to grow as people and as a business, your vendor list should be diverse. Should be diverse. The black man shouldn't be the, this valet guy, the bartender, right? No. They're skilled planners, florists, designers, skilled people. But most of you don't even know them. They exist. Well, where can I find them? Do, your, do the research. Find out. The reason why I have to get a second passport is it's been stamped around the world. People see it, but I think the American culture is just, I think it's, I don't get it. And I'm speaking for, as an immigrant too, right? Because where I'm from, we all embrace everybody else. You know what I mean? White guy comes a tourist, and there's a white man here, there's a black man. I mean, it's, we embrace it. But I think we have to do a better job as wedding professionals because it just leaves a lot to be desired. I know we have the ability to do that. If you really love your job, it's important that you really make an effort. And they'll just, you know, when you go, somebody comes to a meeting, in, introduce them to somebody else. Introduce them. It's important. Remember, inclusion is an action word. It's more than just saying, hey, you're invited to the party. No, pull up a seat. Let me shake hands with whomever. Who do I need to meet? They have to do the part. You have to do that part. Because remember, the pendulum swings both ways. As you can open up those doors for me, we can also open up doors for you. A photographer is as important as you are as planners and designers. Because you never know the couples are asking us. We can say, oh, they're awful over there. They love taking black people money, but they never see a black vendor there. Or whatever, whatever you know, race they are. But it's important that we really work together if we want to grow as an industry. Thank you. Wild card. Oh, wild card. I want y'all to take, if you don't take anything else from any of these people on this panel, please take that with you. Take that home with you, okay? Um, your wild card question is, what is something about your profession that you wish other vendors knew? That could make everybody's job easier on wedding day. Oh, do you hold the, hold the first part? I mean, second part. <laughs> <laughs> I ha hey, don't, don't get mad at my brain farts. I'm going to have several of those up here, okay? As a wedding photographer, there's, two, part, there's two, two type of photographers. There are portrait photographers who shoot weddings, and there are wedding photographers who shoot portraits. Most couple hire portrait photographers. Portraits are, portraits are always great, but wedding day is about telling stories. Portraits are a fraction of a wedding day. You have to tell the most of the day, it's storytelling. And most photographers aren't trained to tell stories, they're trained to take portraits. So you see beautiful portraits on Instagram, look for the real gallery, look for the full gallery. They don't understand layering, how to tell stories, how you need to connect something over there that ties to the couple. That's very hard to do, you have to be trained to do that. I was trained to do that, paid for it. But a lot of photographers shooting weddings aren't wedding photographers. They're just portrait photographers who at a wedding, shooting wedding, taking pictures. We make portraits, we make pictures. We, 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 don't, we tell the stories as authentically as possible and it's very, very hard to do when you do it right. Anybody can shoot a wedding, but not everybody can tell a real story. This is gonna be a hard one to follow. <laughs> Thank you so much. The next uh, question is for uh, Heather Nickel. Okay, and we're gonna have to make it a little brief, guys, because we're down to just 20 short minutes, so short and sweet. 
What are some creative ways wedding vendors can showcase their work together to attract potential clients? This is really easy, style shoots. And if you don't do them, you need to do them. So uh, Don took me out one time, we were like barely merged, and he's like, hey, we're gonna go to this venue, we're gonna do a style shoot, and like, you should have seen the first one, y'all, it's awful. But, and then from there, we've really, and this is another thing, there's, we're a special category, like we can shoot pretty drinks all night long, but it's really your job to make sure you're getting the photos and the content you want from that style shoot. Because the photographers are just there doing their thing, shooting pretty stuff, but like, I want the close up of the drink. I want the flat lay with the drink. I want my trailers being shot, when my bartender's in action. So um, that's kind of your job when you're in a style shoot and to do your work to make sure you get the content out of it. And I've learned that the hard way because I've showed up really bitter before. But now um, I kind of work that style shoot and make sure that I get what I need. And then also with that is you're there cross-promoting with all these vendors. It is the best networking you're going to get. You're in a room with all these professionals for what they say is gonna be four hours, but then it's eight hours. <laughs> so you're just, I mean, you're there meeting new people, meeting new friends, and then um, and you, you make those friends for life. So if you're not doing them, do them, try it, get out of your comfort zone. It's definitely a way to grow your business. Thank you so oh, much. Yeah. I forgot about my wild card. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> the wild card question is, since you brought up styled shoots, a lot of people don't participate in styled shoots because they don't understand them. Mm -hmm. Um, as a alternative vendor, like you mentioned, do you feel that not just you, but all vendors that are participating in the styled shoots should have to relay what the photographer needs to shoot? I think so. I mean, if you, it, once you start doing them, you'll learn what kind of content you want, but not every time I do a style shoot is it that I want the same thing. Maybe it's like something I'm looking for on my website. Uh, maybe we're trying to work on our new brochure or something like that. So it just really depends on what you want out of it. Even if you're a DJ, I've seen DJs at style, style shoots too. I mean, then I think it's important that we bring everybody involved. And I love it when it's like a little micro wedding and it actually looks real. Um, that's when I feel like you get the best content too. Awesome. Thank you I so much. I don't get to bitch about anything? No. Uh, you don't, no. I mean, you can. I would, <laughs> if, you have, if you'd like to bitch no, about no, no, something, no, let's go. Okay. okay. Jennifer Sarah. Hello. How do you stay informed about the latest trends and innovations within the wedding industry, and how can this knowledge benefit collaboration with other vendors? Yes. So I don't know if you guys know this. I'm on to my like 15th annual 25th birthday. So I'm out of touch with a lot of the brides. Um, so it's very important that I do my research constantly. That's another part of our job that we don't even think about. Um, so we need to be on Pinterest, we need to be on TikTok, we need to be asking our younger counterparts their feedback on what's trending. Like I will go to my younger counterparts and say, hey, what are the looks, what are the makeup trends, what flowers or florals are coming in, what are the hairstyles that are coming in. It's important that you guys do that constant research because it's always changing, it's always evolving. Um, let me see what else. Oh, a fashion trend. Go back and look at the fashion trends. I actually was working with a fashion designer to collaborate on some apparel, and he was asking for my feedback. And he pointed out um, that the trends circulate every 20 years. Interesting enough, we went to a lot of the ads. The photography was starting to slowly trickle in in the same um, pattern as well. So if you look back on a lot of ads, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, go back 20 years, you'll start to see those trends trickling in. So you can be on top of those trends before anybody else, and you're not stuck in that pattern of, oh, bright and airy, bright and airy. I don't even know what is like what it is right now, but right. you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, let me see. Follow your Instagram influencers. Um, see who's local, who's about that demographic. I think the age demographic right now for getting married is between the ages of 28, 32. It's been a while since I've done my market research on that, but look that up. See what the demographic for Dallas-Fort Worth is. If you're doing a destination wedding, see what age group that is. What does that look like? Um, so yeah, follow those people. Make sure you're constantly aware of those changes, because that's very important to stay on trend, because you're gonna fall behind 
Like honestly, what following those trends are what's grabbing those brides' attention. Even if that's not your normal style, it's what's gonna grab their attention. Thank you so uh, much, Jennifer. If we have time for the wild cards, I'm gonna ask them right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just move on down the panel, so no wild cards, um, unless we have a few minutes. Um, I am a wild card. You are a wild card. <laughs> um, <laughs> next question is for uh, Ms. Crystal Granger. Hello. Have you ever encountered a situation where a wedding vendor's actions negatively impacted an event? If so, how did you handle it and what lessons were learned? I need that emoji. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have. So I actually have a unique position because I am a planner and a florist. Um, sometimes we're hired for both. Most often we are hired for both. Um, and then there are occasions where we're only hired to be one or the other. And so I, uh, I hate this. I feel like a gossip. Um, I'm going to try to like keep it as broad as possible. But I have had an experience where I was the florist and the planner showed up extremely late. Um, and you know, this is a very moving industry, okay? So if you're two or three minutes late or something like that, okay, like you're moving around, you're grabbing something for the bride on the way to the venue or whatever. That's one thing, but, but don't be 15, 30, three hours behind, okay? That's really a struggle for the schedule for the day. Um, so anyway, I'm there doing the flowers planner is a no-show so far, and I am in leggings and my t-shirt, my, my team shirt, and I have my team with me, and we're quite a ways away from where our studio is. Um, so anyway, I send my team home, and I stay there, and I had not brought a change of clothes next time I will, uh, but I stayed because I wasn't sure if planner was going to show, and I couldn't let that bride have a day without a planner. So what I was going to do is plan. <laughs> and I knew the bride well enough that I felt like I could step in and do what I needed to do. And then I did step in throughout the day. I also hid in the background as much as I could, but I stepped in throughout the day as much as I could as well without embarrassing the bride because of my attire. Um, but the planner finally showed, but the wedding did not go smoothly. Um, and that's that's sad and that's a struggle because I love that bride. And I think that if they are paying us that we should, even if, I mean, or if you're volunteering, if you've volunteered your time, then keep your word um, and be where you're supposed to be and do what you're supposed to do. And the planner's actions negatively affected all of the vendors there. We all walked away with frustration. We all walked away a little bit ticked off, if you want to know the truth. I mean, I, I would say that, would you feel that way? You would feel annoyed or irritated. Um, and I had really hoped, had high hopes for that person. So that, and then I've also had a another um, situation where the caterer showed up very, very late, and they had sent me an entire team of uh, servers that only spoke Spanish, and I did not have one of my Spanish speakers with me, and so that was a struggle because we were having to figure out how to put things on the tables that they, they couldn't, I couldn't communicate well with them. So just be where you're supposed to be, be there on time, and do your very best. Okay, Reggie. What are your thoughts on cross-promotion among wedding vendors, and how can it be done effectively without overshadowing each other? So, cross-promotion, I mean, it's, uh, it's extremely critical because we're all, we're all entrepreneurs in this room. So, at some point, you're going to have to get in front of that camera. And uh, I've been behind the camera for 13 years, and we did a branding shoot, me and my wife, and I got in front of that camera, I didn't know what to do. I started sweating. I'm like, yo, this is what they feel every time I put the camera on them? I'm like, yo, it's, but, but you know, you got to tap in. You got to like, you got to black out, man, and just, it's just go hard. So, you know, all the social media, all the, all the platforms that we have today, you know, we kind of old school, you know, we got to get tapped in today. I have a, I have a TikTok account, but it's, it's literally for when she sent me TikToks at two in the morning. Just keep sending me TikToks. I still got the stock picture on now. I have no videos, but I got to get in there. You know, I got to start doing that. And that's why I brought my son in, raising him up, you know what I'm saying? So he can start, you know, filming us at work. Yeah, so he can start, you know, recording us at work. And uh, it's just, you know, you got to get immersed into, uh, you know, with the, with, the, with the emergence of AI and things of that nature, you got to tap in. Don't get left behind, all right? I love to work with each and every one of you. I'm a videographer, okay? I can put all of y'all on. 
tap in, holler at me. Because, you know, because uh, look, look, you know, th those little static shots of you working only go so far. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you need something more cinematic. You know what I'm saying? Something that's going to drive. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you can only do so much, man, with those little static shots, man. You need some movement. You need something steady. You need something nice. All right, so anything else? Second part of that question? What was the second part? Overshadowing, right? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, how can it be done effectively without overshadowing each other? Okay. Uh, well, you can't overshadow me. I mean, I'm behind the camera. <laughs> You know, you can't overshadow. I want you in the shot. I actually, I want you in there. So I can show my skills and you can show your skills. And I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, cohesive marriage. So we need to link up, man. You know, look me up. Miss Jessica, can you share a positive experience you've had working with another wedding vendor and how it contributed to overall success of the event? Did we already ask that question? Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Changing the question? Oh. Yeah, so I actually, um, we got to pick two and we switched this ah. and since we're on print. So in my experience, how can a wedding vendor best support each other's business and foster a collaborative community? So, um, I mean, anyone that knows, and I will, I will say this on most of the ven uh, venue owners, I feel like we are very fortunate that we have strong bonds and we, we are truly a team. Like we don't have an issue. Like if a couple comes into my venue and we're not a good fit, I'm like, hey, there's this French farmhouse. This is Open Ivy. This is Hills of Luella. Or if I'm booked, like we are always constantly texting and helping each other. We actually have our own group that we um, try to meet up at least quarterly to talk about our venues and what we can do better and provide each service to everyone available. Um, and I myself, I know there's a couple venues in here, like Hills of Luella, I know French Farmhouse, Kelsey and Michelle and I just went out to dinner last night and they've just been so thankful for being a new venue within 10 miles of me that we have literally cried and celebrated and helped anything negative that I've gone through, I've tried to help them not experience and go through that very stressful time, whether it's construction or anything. And I know Amanda and Stacy as well, like we have had so many phone calls and how can we help not only us or me help them, but them help us and just talking about those things. So um, community over competition each and every day and kind of going back to what he was saying down there, you can sit here and talk about things all day long, but actions are so much greater. So you can say that you are about community, but until you're out there and acting that part, then you're really not. So that's what I have to say. All right, Ms. Bramari, we've got about five minutes oh, left okay. for the rest of you. So let's, let's get no down pressure. to the nitty gritty. How do you handle situations where a wedding vendor is unable to fulfill their responsibilities and what steps can be taken to mitigate the impact on the event? Okay, so I'll piggyback off of what Crystal was saying. Um, everyone's brand is different. So for me, the biggest thing, what I believe in is your business is you. You are your brand. Customer service is 100%. If you know me, which I don't, I know one person in this room. So hi, I'm Bramari. I hope I get to know a lot of you. But the biggest thing that I bring is I want to be your friend. I'm a friendly, social person. If I sound hoarse, it's because I talk too much because I love talking to people. Like, Jessica was like, oh my God, we have to talk to, I'm like, I love this, I live for this, I wanna be all of your friends. So I bring that energy when I go to deliver a wedding cake. I do cakes, by the way, I own a bakery. Um, so if I show up to a wedding with your cake, or not your cake, but your couple's cake, like that's how I'm coming in. I'm very casual, I'm very fun, I'm very Gen Z, even though I'm a millennial. Don't remind me. But that's kind of like what I'm bringing in. So that being said, when things go wrong, because they do, we know that they do. We're all in this industry. I've been married. Sometimes things go wrong. And so I'm just going to treat it as if this couple's my friend. These vendors are my friends. I've also, you know, helped with flowers. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I know how to put them on a cake. But tell me where to snip. Tell me, like, what, you, what do you need me to do? 
the, some of the planners look a little stressed sometimes, and I get it. You guys have a stressful job. I don't want to do it. I like to drop the cake off and go. But if I walk in a room and I see the planners, like, stressed, first of all, I'm going to try not to bother you this entire time. And then before I leave, when I check out, I'm like, hey, is there anything that you need me to do? Do you need me to set out the... I don't know, table, I don't know what you guys do, but I ask you because at the end of the day, it doesn't stop at just cake for me. It never does. Like even if you walk into the shop to buy a cupcake, I'm going to ask you your life story and we're going to talk and that's how I lose my voice. But I bring that same energy to weddings. I'm like, I how like, let me be a help. Let me meet the, the need that's here because I want my couples to have a great day and a great memory regardless of whether it's my service or something that might have happened with somebody else like you said we're all a team and we're all like our goal is to deliver you know a great event to that person so or people so yeah okay I'm sorry that I'm, I hope it was short <laughs> for Mari you are my person I'm a talker too I can tell, I can tell. I'm a talker Okay, Ms. Brooke, how important is communication between wedding vendors, and what strategies do you use to maintain effective communication? Um, so being in catering and at CN Catering, we cook all of our food on site. Um, communication day of and leading up to is extremely important. We put a lot of time um, into not only reviewing coordinators' timelines, but reviewing our timelines. Our chef makes a fire sheet for our cooks. Um, so day of, whenever things are running late, they're running early, you can't really just come up to us and say, hey, y'all ready for buffet 30 minutes early? No, ma'am, my chicken is raw in the oven. Um, so I, I, we are constantly reaching out to planners, asking for the timelines. Um, and then I would say how we prevent issues day of is part of our checklist is to go straight to the planner, straight to the DJ or whoever our entertainment is and confirm our timeline. Are we still good with these times? Do you think we're going to be running early? Do you think we're going to be running late? Um, and then just, you know, vendor, even though we are each our own team, we are one big team at the event. You know, we've obviously, I think we've all had the same Thing, saying that being a team day of is the biggest um, biggest aspect and if you are not on the team and you want to just say oh well the caterer wasn't ready well you really just made us all look horrible not just the caterer um, so I would say yeah uh, timelines which we've talked a lot about and uh, just communication day of and staying in touch and, and acting like we're all a team. All right, Ms. Page, are there specific tools or platforms you can find helpful for networking and connecting with other wedding vendors? Carrie is going to be handing something out to everyone here. Um, this is my coveted networking list. If you have received one of these through email from me, this one's probably new. We are up to 30 associations, y'all, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for the event industry. Um, so this has every association you could be a part of, um, either their email address or their Facebook group, wh whichever one they have, um, and then a little blurb about them, um, and this is my blurb opinion, so, <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I also want you, if you have not already, if you're not already a member, I want all of y'all to take out your phones, which I know that you have in your lap anyway. Um, and go to Facebook and join DFW Industry Friends. I have already texted April Ham for those of you who remember her, and told her that she would get a flood of inquiries at 12 o'clock. So if you are not a member of DFW Industry Friends, go on Facebook, join. You do have to answer the three questions or we will automatically delete you. Uh, we don't even look at your name if you don't answer the three questions. But answer the three questions. We will accept you in. Every Monday on that group, I do a post called This Week in Networking. It's always called that. It's always pinned at the top. So if you miss it for some reason, it's there. It has every open house, bridal show, association event. Um, sometimes there's like B&I type networking groups. You know, the ones with the Mary Kay people and the realtors. Um, that you can go to. Anything that I know about will be on there. And then I always allow people to add comments underneath if they know about something that I don't. So just follow that. Use that for your calendar. 
Go to all of these groups. I know there's 30 of them, y'all, and I know that time is precious, but take a few months. Go, and I always tell people for the bigger associations that you have to pay a fee for, um, go at least twice because they might have had a bad day the first day or whatever. Um, but go. Join the association that you think will fit you best, not only for your business, but also personally for your, your people. That's why I do this. I have gotten, I mean, I've tripled our business since I started almost 13 years ago, but I do it personally. I do it for personal growth for myself. I do it for friendships. I do it for um, just becoming a better me. Um, and so you have to look at it that way too. Um, don't go just wanting business. You need to form those relationships with people because they will, they will buy from their friends. You'll get business eventually. But don't go for the wrong reasons. And the wrong reasons is I'm here only because I want to make money. That's just not the right reason to join these associations. You're joining these associations to give back, to better the industry, to become a part of this industry, to be ingrained in this industry, and eventually you will make money. I swear it happens. It comes. Um, but also, once you find your people, once you find your group, join something like join, join the group, pay your association fees, but get on the board. If you don't have time for the board, because it is kind of an undertaking, just join a committee. Some of these committees are literally you call five people, it takes you five seconds because you're leaving voicemails anyway. So there's little things that you can do that take five minutes, or you can become president of seven associations um, if you want to do that as well. But get involved, and that's really the best way to not only grow your business, but also to form these relationships like everyone talked about so that you do have that, that tribe that you can go to when the shit hits the fan. I cussed. I love that. I love that. Guys, we have, we have run almost out of time. Um, I didn't anticipate. I did anticipate. That's a lie. <laughs> I knew we were going to go over time, and I really wanted to ask the panel the wild card questions because the wild card questions were kind of like the raw, uncut, not rehearsed, this is my question, this is what I'm going to say kind of shit that we didn't plan for. Um, but in closing, I would just like to say that, again, a wedding day is just like a production. If you treat every wedding day as a celebrity event um, or that there's a celebrity planner working or that somebody that you're trying to impress, you know what I mean? You'll never, you'll never, you'll never falter. Um, I do believe that the guests at the wedding or actually my coach, my business coach told me that if I shot every wedding like five of my clients were part of the bridal party or part of the reception or part of the audience or whoever's there, um, that I would never ever miss a step. And so as soon as I started hearing that, it just made plenty of sense to me. Because when people are in the crowd like you guys are, um, wedding guests, and something goes wrong and, a, and we can see it, everything, it doesn't matter if it's the DJ, the timeline, the caterer, the makeup artist, any of us that screw up, everything falls back on the planner, everything. So even if it's not Tiffany's fault, it's Tiffany's fault, right? And so that's what we need to do a lot more of is being consistent in community. Um, I would love to just get out of our own way and unwire our brains that we don't respond to planners' emails. We don't respond to what time are you coming. We don't respond to the timeline. Oh, I don't need that. I don't need to look at this. But yet you're calling the planner going, so where am I supposed to set up the photo booth when she's actually sent you a, a damn diagram of how the, the venue looks and where you're going to be because you didn't take a chance, you know, you didn't look at it. It's like we get so caught up and every day because we do this all the time, we're booked and booked and booked and booked. So it's like, ah. You know, another one bites the dust, another, another event on the calendar, and what we really should be doing is having, you know, a team chat, or hey, it's wedding day, guys, tomorrow's the big day, anything you guys need to know with, from me, anything I can do to help you out, I believe that there should be post and pre-event meetings, 
I, I believe that we should send follow-ups. Hey, how can, I, how can I help you better? How can I serve you better? How was my service? Would you recommend that I do anything else? I believe that we just need to be a team on wedding day, and a lot of us aren't. A lot of us are just out there solo for dolo, just individuals. And it really, really sucks for the people that are trying to be close and are trying to be like, hey, you know, we're going to knock this shit out of the park. And then you, 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 get some, you get someplace with, with a vendor that you've never met, but if you would have had some type of interaction with them prior, you're building just a little bit of rapport to where you walk in the building and you're just like, oh, Bob, shit, we talked on an email, how you doing? Versus, oh, that's Bob, I don't know if I want to go say anything to him. You know what I mean? So in closing, and one day we'll put this together where we can actually talk longer about this because I had a whole damn presentation, okay? but I'm blind and I'm not feeling well and I'm sitting down. So we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you for a sold out event, our first one in January. Let's, let's, plan, let's plan to sell out the rest of the luncheons. I'm bound and determined to do that. I've got some amazing speakers for this year, guys. Um, like I said, Heather done messed up when she appointed me educate because I'm, I'm really going to try to bring forth as much education as I can to where we all leave with something. So thank you guys so very much. Thank you for the panel for coming. Wait, hold on one second. Oh, so if anybody has any questions, we actually put uh, little cards on the table with pens, and I was supposed to make an announcement that if you had, okay, okay, we got, oh gosh, you got your little question? Okay. Does anybody have any questions for myself or anybody on the panel uh, based on what they do for a living that you have a situation where you may need to know the answer to it or how do you handle this or how would you handle that? Does anybody have any questions? If you don't, I'm going to randomly start calling on somebody. Oh, okay. We got, okay. Rick. I knew it was coming, Lord. I knew it was. Hey, right, so video is a is a it's a little bit different. It's a little bit, you know, like I shoot you guys. I try to shoot all the vendors because I know it's coming. So when I see that DJ over there get busy, I'm like, let me get let me get a session in with him. Let me go over there, get him about 15 clips, because you know, I know it's coming. So it's just when you're super busy, you're backlogged. You know, I know you knew that was coming. But uh <laughs> you know, you editing video is is, you know, photo, they got help, they got AI. Yeah, imagine AI, you just, you know, batch edit. You know, you can't do that with video. Video, you clip by clip. Right, what was that? All right, we gonna, I'm going to get that in. I, I might have something for you. I might have something for you real soon. But, uh, you know, just, you know, like, I have, a, I have a team of editors because I used to edit everything myself. I didn't want to let it go. But you just get so busy and videos just, you know, revisions come in. They want to uproot the whole song. It's like, that's the whole video. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so expensive for them to know that I am live when you watch the video. Hey, can I get a couple of clips? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, hey, Bob, how about sending me a couple of clips? I'll send it to them. You leave me an offer to pay for them, and then you pay for the clips. He wants to know. And look, hey, you offer to pay me, you're going to get them clips. <laughs> okay? I'm going to find a way. I'm going to start a new project. And be like, look, let me get these clips over to him. You know what I'm saying? You want it raw, unedited? Just wants the straight clips raw. Right, we can work. Hey, look, look, I ain't, I ain't, look, I ain't like the other videographers. I, I get it over to you. Google Drive, what you got? Google Dropbox, I send it right over. Yeah, I got you. You good? You good on that? I'd also like to piggyback off that because I used to run our social media and if you're not tagging the vendors that also might be part of your problem, they do want credit for it. So, just saying. Come on, we got, we got room for one more. Yes, ma'am.
That's a good question for uh, Crystal or Tiffany. So for us, when we send you your timeline, we're also going to request your social media handle. Um, and if you'll give it to us, then we'll tag you. So it, maybe not all planners will ask you for it, but give it anyway. Um, just be pushy about it and give it anyway. I was, was going to say the same thing. On the actual timeline I send out, it has everybody's handles right on there. It's all on one page. You don't have to guess. You can just copy paste over into social media and every single vendor is just as important. So a pianist should definitely be on that list. 